Hey guys, um, so let's take a look at an actual paper. Um, this will help you understand how your rubric is actually expressed in real life, in actual writing. Um, so we're just going to go through this paper and I'm going to hit the rubric points that are uh, important. Um, and then when you pull this, I'm going to share this file with you guys, but make sure when you pull the file up that you're viewing, that you're doing it, viewing these comments over here on the side. Um, if you're not viewing the comments over here, um, you're not going to learn a whole lot from, from looking at the example paper. So make sure that you're reading the comments to really get, um, get everything out of the example paper. Okay, so your title page is pretty easy. Um, you should have a title, Discovering Tenebra Molitor Preferences and Potato Calorie Density. So things to point out about this title is that um, there is a Latin name, a species name in the title, and they formatted that correctly. So you will be graded on that if you have species names in your title and they're not formatted correctly. Um, and the title also includes the independent variable. So that's basically no matter what it is that you studied, you should include your independent variable um, in your paper title. Um, we have our student name here, Leilani McStudy, and we have the date it was written. So all that's Pretty easy, easy points, you guys. Okay, all right, moving on to the introduction. The introduction, you're gonna need to have background um, on your on the principle that you're studying. You're gonna need to have um, citations that support your background. So you want like actual peer reviewed sources um, that are giving you your background information. You need to have your hypothesis. You need to have context for that hypothesis. You need to have your prediction or predicted results. Um, and then you shouldn't be putting methods and stuff like that in your introduction. So, um, okay, so up here they have their background. Since this paper was on mealworms, they gave us some background on mealworms. Um, you know, they told us that they're a common and important part of the ecosystem. So that's kind of helping us understand like why like, why would I want to read a paper about mealworms? <laughs> um, so they gave us some more background there. And then because this paper is about mealworm diet, so that's, or their dietary preferences, that's like the biological phenomenon that's being studied. So they gave us some background on uh, mealworm diets here by telling us that their life expectancy increases when they have a balanced diet of protein and carbs, but that, um, you know, if mealworms are given a choice, they choose carbs over protein. Um, I think a lot of humans do that too, myself included. <laughs> so, um, you know, anyway, so yeah, so they gave us background on mealworms and then because the paper's about the biological phenomena of mealworm diets, they gave us background on mealworm diet. Um, okay, then their causal question is included. Um, so this is what inspired them to come up with their hypothesis. Would they prefer higher calorie forms of potato? Okay, so then after that, they actually gave us their hypothesis. Um, they said, we hypothesized that mealworms have a preference for foods that are more energy dense. So um, that's their biological phenomena is food preference. And they've related that to their independent variable, which is like energy density of the food. So they've, they've specified that relationship between dietary preference and energy density. They said that they have a higher, stronger or higher preference for foods that are more energy dense. So again, please watch the video on hypothesis writing and predicted results writing to make sure that you're doing all this correctly. Okay, so then after the hypothesis, they gave us, you don't have to do it in this order, but they gave us the context for their hypothesis after the hypothesis. Um, so remember that the context that you give should help the reader understand why you came up with a hypothesis that you did. So they said that um, since mealworms um, have huge appetites, um, foods that are energy dense, you know, would help satisfy that appetite and help the mealworm larva go into the next stage. Um, they also thought this because humans prefer foods, well, you know, like chips over things like raw potatoes. Um, so anyway, so again, they gave us our hypothesis and then they gave us that rationale or that context that helps us understand why they came up with their hypothesis. Um, then after that, we have our prediction or predicted results, um, which again, watch the video if you need to, 
but this links their dependent variable, so number of mealworms that chose a side, to all of their treatments, so potato chips versus raw potatoes. So they said, we predicted that more mealworms would go to the potato chip side instead of the raw potato side. Um, so again, when you write your prediction or predicted results, you need to include all of your different treatments. Don't just say, um, you know, treatment X is going to be the highest. You need to say what's going to happen for X, Y, and Z, and you can just, you know, rank that in toward, terms of highest, lowest, fastest, shortest, you know, whatever, but you need to include all of your treatments when you're writing your predicted results. Um, okay, and then just... I didn't highlight this, but just you can see that their citations are on here for their background. Um, so again, make sure you're including those citations for uh, to get full points. Citations can also be included in your context or your reasoning for coming up with your hypothesis. Um, but anyway, as long as you have two citations in that section, you'll get full points as long as they're peer-reviewed uh, sources. All right, I hope that helps you understand the title page and the introduction for your papers.